Hi, everybody, and welcome along to another episode of UCAT Conference Television. I'm Colm Cronin from the Adventures in Advising podcast, and today I am delighted to be joined by the opening keynote speaker, Dr. Celia Greenway. Celia, how are you? I'm fine, Colm. It's it's actually quite a grey day in England, but but it's it's I'm feeling sort of quite, as you can see from my orange top, I'm feeling quite bright and vibrant myself. Well, I, I'm glad you got the the memo on the the bright shirts. Uh, <laughs> I I was uh, hoping that would be the case. Um, it's delightful to have the opportunity to to chat to you, and we will delve into your role as director of student engagement at the University of Birmingham. We'll talk a little bit about uh, the what maybe delegates can expect in that opening keynote. But before we get to that. Can you talk to me a little bit about, you know, how you came to work in higher education? Yes, I think probably, I mean, it's very interesting. Often academics become academics because they've been very good at a subject and they, they've excelled. I'm probably the converse of that. <laughs> I owe the whole of my life to Mrs Thatcher. So the whole of my career is to do with um, Mrs. Thatcher's decision to um, introduce the national curriculum in 1989. So I was a classroom teacher in 1989. I was teaching good old fashioned cookery, which uh, most people don't know about me actually. I was a, a home economics teacher and um, I'd only just started teaching and Mrs. Thatcher banned my subject. So I had a baby. <laughs> so this probably seems sort of, so how did you end up being a leading academic? Well, what happened to me was that the local primary school along the road employed me because I had a, a degree in food science. And um, I discovered what I didn't know. I discovered I was very, very good with four-year-olds, that I got the four. I got the fourness of four-year-olds. So this led to me then doing um, a master's degree in child development and psychology. I then became very interested in the training of people that worked with young children. I was working with nursery nurses that had just been mums. And I'm, not, and I'm not saying that's a bad thing, but I was interested in the lack of qualifications and the sort of accidental routes that people became early years teachers in the way that I had, that I'd become an early years teacher by accident. So that made me go back to thinking about how I could use my child development background and my practical experience to have a, a greater sphere of influence, I guess, over developing teachers. So um, I was in a primary school as a primary teacher. I then did some evening work, as some people do, lecturing at an FE college. And that led me to then working at the University of Birmingham. And probably I have a, a, a more circuitous route than most. What happened to me was that my friend was training athletes at the University of Birmingham and said, why don't you become a, a lecturer? There's a job going as an early years specialist. And I said, well, why would I want to do that? Because at that stage I had a, a management role actually in an FE college where I was training nursery nurses. And for those, those people in HE will know that the money at that stage, this is 2005, the, the salary wasn't particularly good. I couldn't really see the reason to move. But I went along for the interview out of curiosity, and I guess the rest is history. But uh, I joined the university in 2005 as a practitioner. I didn't have a doctorate. I didn't have a publication. I'm a very unusual route to being a strategic lead in a Russell Group university. I worked very hard and very quickly to get my doctorate. I did it within a minimum period of registration and submitted early. Um, I really enjoyed academic work more than I anticipated. Uh, I worked in the field of initial teacher education. So I've trained around about a thousand teachers. And I've now got people that have um, worked with me, say from 2005 onwards, and, and now train teachers themselves. So I mean, one of my, um, I suppose, 
loveliest things is that I've now got a community of practitioners working in Birmingham, the West Midlands and beyond that, that I've trained and really work their hardest to give children the best start. And I've loved that work. Um, but that has, I think it's really quite interesting because my early years work has dominated my work at the university. Although I'm now responsible for other things, that theoretical background and the work I did in my doctorates, which was looking at inspection in early years, has really influenced how the rest of my career development is, has formed. That's really interesting. And I love hearing about how people come in um, to, to higher ed. And it, as you said, it is very often a circuitous route, um, but it, that's what kind of brings, I think, so much to, to higher education when people do come in from different paths. And uh, certainly really interesting to, to hear about yours and about like that community of practitioners that, that now exists. And then if we look at, say, your current role at the University of Birmingham, Director of, of Student Engagement, can you talk to me a, a little bit about that and, and what that looks like? Yes, yeah, so that's been, it's been a really, really great opportunity for me. Um, I was leading education in the School of Education and this role came up, at, which is a role at DPVC level. And I thought, here's my opportunity actually to do something that impacts on the whole institution and the role was to lead uh, a change in personal academic tutoring and to develop student representation which which really goes well together it was a new role um, newly created and I applied and I applied with a sense of what I wanted to do actually and I what I wanted to do was to move tutoring from something that was perhaps considered as an addition to something that was central to what students did. So what I what I wanted to change was that I wanted people to feel that there was space to do tutorial work, that it wasn't a hurried conversation in a corridor, that it was actually a designated space and time for all students, whether they be first year undergraduates or indeed part-time PGT student, that every student had a personal tutor and that every student knew what the tutorial was for. So it's been, um, I've been doing it now since 2018. It was a, a three-year appointment. So in fact, it's been an unusual three years, as you can imagine, because I've spent a year of it sort of working from my dining room. But in that three years coming up, we've, we've really transformed practice at the University of Birmingham. I mean, people that were at the summer UCAT conference will remember we received um, the Institutional Award for Innovation in Tutoring. And we've done an awful lot in a very short space of time. But we've done that by going back to the early years focus, by developing that community of practice. I work very closely with um, a, a a role that existed before but didn't have a clear role descriptor. So I work with a team of senior tutors and the senior tutors lead personal academic tutoring in their school. And that has made a, a significant difference to the way that we approach tutoring. I think the other thing to say is that it is a strategic role. So the institution really has put importance on personal academic tutoring. So everybody now has clear role guidance, not just the tutors, not just the senior tutors, but also the students know what tutoring is for, what it's about. So I think it's been a really, really, really interesting time, as you can imagine. I mean, the pandemic has made tutoring even more crucial than, than it was before. I mean, I've been quoted saying that I consider tutoring to be pivotal to the student journey and I do I don't I really must emphasize this that that's the early years thing that everything and everyone's important the holistic nature of personal tutoring it, it can't be overestimated the importance that, that the relationship between the students and their tutor particularly in these these difficult times for students so at Birmingham we don't just see it as as an entitlement we we see we live it 
we do it. Students come to tutorials, they attend, and they attend because they want to. And I think that's really important. And in fact, this year, and I will talk about this, not, not in my opening keynote, I'm also doing a paper, um, which is about the group tutorial system that we've used at Birmingham this year. So we've moved from having three individual tutor tutorials a year to every student, undergraduate and PGT student, having a weekly tutorial. And we wouldn't have been able to do that without that central support and without that acknowledgement that the tutorial is important. So that's my role. Um, I'm still actually though an academic and I think that that's also what's really important is that I'm 60% director student engagement. The rest of the time I still lecture, I still see students, I run a weekly group tutorial group, I have personal tutees and I think it's really nice for me to see the things that I've written about uh, happening and unfolding around me. Um, as I said, originally this job was for three years. I've loved doing it and I'm going to do it for another two at least. Um, those people that aren't familiar with Russell Group Universities, we do things on sort of like crop rotation, <laughs> that we take on roles, we, we learn things and, and then we stop doing them and go back to the academics. But I can honestly say I love this job. I really love it. I love the impact that good tutoring has on the students. And I don't feel my job here is done. I feel the things that I've learnt from the pandemic and the things that working together as a community have enabled us to do can, can help us during, if we, I won't say normal times, but when we return to a more normal campus, the things that we've learnt this year that we can apply in a tutorial sy system will really benefit our students. I think I've sort of gone on and on there a little bit about um, how much I love my job, but I, I really do. I, I really relish it and I, I really enjoy the community of practice from working with the senior tutor group and several of them are talking at the conference this week as well. And I think that that's really nice that we have, um, we reflect the institution that we actually are using research in tutorials to inform our tutorial process. And we're all very committed to UCAT and the institutional membership because of that actually, because we like the fact that it develops our, our practice, but also it enables us to be active researchers. Yeah, and this I, I I love the fact that as a strategic leader in the field that you talk with such passion about the work about students and that you still meet with students. I think that's really important and great to hear. And one of the things I've always been love what Birmingham, the University of Birmingham does. I've been to UKISA conferences, Amashi conferences, now the UCAT conferences, and in each one of them I always see is there somebody from the University of Birmingham presents because they're always doing really interesting work and that continues. And I suppose delegates are now going to get the opportunity to hear from you, as you said, you have, you're presenting a, a, a paper, but also the opening keynote. Um, and we are obviously pre-recording this a little bit before the conference, but can you talk to me maybe about what, um, you know, some of maybe the, the themes that you will be looking to, to cover in that opening keynote? Yeah, and I, I have to say it's, for me, it's been, it's a privilege. It's a privilege to continue to work with students, but it's also a huge honour to have been asked to do the opening keynotes. And if we go from the fact that, you know, I was a, a teacher, and to actually be an opening keynote at what I consider to be a really important conference for the sector, for me is a huge privilege and it's a huge privilege to reflect the views of my community and, and indeed the students that I work with. And the theme is, is inclus inclusion and um, I've been working on a number of projects which I will talk about to delegates. So I'm looking at the um, keynote, the opening keynote as being uh, a reflection on my practice, but looking at some of those overarching theoretical principles connected to inclusion. So one of the things that, that delegates may be aware of is that Birmingham have had a very vibrant, um, this is Birmingham the city as well as the university, had a very vibrant approach to diversity. And one of the messages that I really want to get across in my keynote is that inclusion is indeed about everybody. We can't pick and choose the characteristic that's part of the Equality Act. 
that we do need to think about when we're approaching inclusion as that very thing, that it is about every one of us and that we all need to be committed to providing a diverse and welcoming environment to our students. So I am going to go through ways of removing barriers between academics and students. I'm going to look at how to create a welcoming environment in the tutorial space. And I think one of the things that has really become very apparent to me is how intimidating it can seem to students from entering particularly an environment like um, Birmingham, which is a Russell Group in, in institution and talks all the time about its history and its research intensive approach. I think for a student coming from a comprehensive school background and perhaps a disadvantaged background, we need to consider how difficult it can be walking into a professor's office for the first time for their first tutorial. So I've done a lot of work about that, so I'm going to be looking at that. I've also been doing some work about accessibility, and I think that's also really important. I think the one thing that I've learned through the pandemic is that online isn't necessarily bad and that you can build up quite, well, not, a, a, not quite, but you can build up a very successful relationship online with a group of students and with an individual student. So I am going to reflect a little bit on that and share some of the good practice that we've gained from this year. I think as well, I have been heavily influenced by school practice uh, and that will come over. So one of the things that, that happened in Birmingham recently was the No Outsiders campaign that schools were running and I think that's, that will be of interest to the delegates because we've tried to adopt that approach at Birmingham. And I think that has resonance for the rest of the sector because we don't necessarily overtly say how we're being inclusive. We, the school sector does do that and it does do a big thing about everybody being welcome. We seem to think the job is done when people arrive, that they will automatically know you're welcome. But I think we need to do more about that. I think we need to also emphasise your first generation. Don't be don't be daunted by university. You're black. It, you know, it's important that we recognise that people, if they don't see themselves reflected in the community that the university is, don't automatically feel welcome. So I think that we need to create the right tutorial environment so people do feel welcome and that it's tokenistic to say that we're all the same because we're not all the same but it's recognizing those differences and being explicit about how those what those differences make to a student's experience that does indeed actually make inclusion work um, and I'm, i think i think that gives you a flavor again of my passion for the subject and actually my determination that students feel welcome. And I think we need, I do think we as a sector need to look at that. I think we have sometimes put barriers up in the way that we are researching. You know, we've got our office hours, we have our research hours, but we need to think about when a student actually wants to engage. <laughs> so, so, you know, it, it isn't just in term time. We do need to think about the fact that we need to produce that, that inclusive, holistic approach to higher education and, and that tutoring is a, we've used the phrase golden thread at Birmingham, that, that tutoring is the golden thread that connects our activity. And I think, I think we've got, that's something that students really need to appreciate, that we are committed to that as a sector and that UCAT actually through its commitment to improving the tutorial experience for, for students could transform their time at university. And by providing an inclusive environment, we will make everybody feel part of that transformation. Well, I am really looking forward to it. That has certainly whetted my appetite. So uh, for uh, for those watching this, uh, the opening keynote will take place on Tuesday, the 30th of March. 
And um, it, there is a lot to look forward to over the course of the entire conference. Uh, you can check out the, the UCAT web, uh, website. You can see plenty of social media channels there. Please do look to, to get involved and keep the, the conversations going. Um, I want to thank you very much, Celia, for taking the, the time to, to chat to me. Uh, wish you continued success in uh, everything that, that you are doing. And, Hopefully, in the, the not too distant future, when travel is possible, uh, you know, I would love to, to get the opportunity to visit the, univer the University of Birmingham and see uh, some of the work that you are all undertaking there. Thank you very much. And it's been a, a huge pleasure to be able to talk about my work very briefly this morning. And I'm really, I cannot emphasize how much I'm looking forward to doing the keynote. Fantastic, Dr. Celia Greenway. Thank you very much. Mm -hmm.